Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and one of the most amazing guests I have on regularly is Tex Mars. And Tex, your range of research goes from the scientific to uh, DNA science recently. And I think what you're doing is you're cracking a, an ancient code that's in the Bible that's prophesied about a great delusion uh, that's going to occur in the end times. And we need to wrestle this because uh, sometimes you need to take an extreme position to get your point across, but we're going to put it in such a context that people needed to get this book and to understand it. They also need to understand that our policies in terms of our foreign military uh, and banking policies are ruled by a class of Sabbatean and Satanists that call themselves Jews, which means praisers. And of course, when they went around the walls of Jericho, the praisers led the army. They were the musicians and the worshipers of the Most High God, which is interesting that the line of the Jews, or Judah, was a, uh, the line which Jesus came from. But the fact is, the modern bloodline is neither the spiritual DNA of uh, the ancient Hebrews or uh, in the conditional covenant, the genetic DNA as well of the peoples, in fact, are more likely to be Palestinians, or 87% likely to carry ancient Hebrew DNA, whereas it's less than 2% for the people that call themselves the people of Israel that are primarily Khazarian. And uh, this code that you cracked is pretty significant that it's actually many times uh, Jewish geneticists that have actually cracked this because they know they're putting people in great jeopardy medically by lying, and of course the policies are really bringing the world to the brink of a nuclear war, which is about to happen this year unless there's some kind of change of sea change in many different avenues. So let's get into your book and why you wrote it. All righty. So we're going to be talking about DNA and uh, the Jewish bloodline, of course. Uh, you, you know, I, I wanted to write this book because the Christian evangelical community has fastened on the idea that the Jews of today, those people who identify themselves as Jews, or in fact the descendants of Abraham. Well, of course, there may be a, a some out there. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, I have. I'm a descendant on Lebanese side from from Cohen's, and I know that from our family line. And there's a number of people in the Middle East, especially Palestinians, that were converted to Islam because right. they're put at the scimitar, which is why the majority of the Palestinian people are actually ancient Hebrews. That's, that's, uh, that is really true. And they probably are the only ones. Now, there are the Sephardic Jews, and many right. Sephardic Jews have written to me, and or even I had a, a conversation with a uh, DNA a geneticist, one of America's most distinguished uh, scientists, uh, just this, about 10 days ago, I guess it was, Dr. Right. Bill. Uh, and and he, he said he's a Sephardic Jew. He does not believe in the Talmud. Uh, and, uh, Which is an evil document. It's, a, it's it one of the most vile documents that's ever been written by any being in any realm of any world in this universe. That's right. And and, and he is a Sephardi Jew who understands DNA. Of course, I mean he's he's uh, he was at the NIH, uh, the National Institutes of Health, as a as a, a cancer researcher, uh, right. and he he's working with all of these geneticists. And he says to me that the world's greatest geneticists now agree. With uh, Dr. Iran Elhaik of uh, Johns Hopkins Medical University, uh, right. and with Dr. Grau of, of the University of Houston and others, uh, so he says that that for 40 years, for some 40 years, the the the, the nation of Israel and the Zionists have been hiding the scientific truth, and it's just as you said, uh, Dr. Bill. That they've been hiding the truth, and as DNA has gotten more and more progressive, we found out more and more information from DNA. We're, we're learning how to, to 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 get a person's DNA and help that person to fight various diseases uh, and medical illnesses. Uh, and if you if you give them the wrong DNA, if you if you use the Zionist yeah. nonsense, well, boy, it's uh, they're, they're, uh, as Doctor Elhike said, these Zionists are killing people. Well, I'm let, let me give you some. Let you me, let me throw some facts out that you, you you probably are aware of, but if not, I'm just mentioning them. Uh, what what do you think the cost was of doing a, the full human genome uh, analysis by a gene biosequencer in 2000, 14 years ago? It was 95.7 million. Mm. By 2008, it was down to 6,000. It was just announced last week that it's now under a thousand dollars. Uh, and it's here, a company here, right in Southern California near San Diego. Um, I use a company, and I actually sent my test off recently, just around the time when they actually, the fatal drugs allowed, or federal death agency, either way, that's what their intention is, 
uh, they interfered by allowing, not allowing the, the uh, genetic company, 23andMe, to actually tell you uh, now at 20, 250 genes that are primarily genes that can relate to specific illnesses. And when you know your genes and you know your organic acids with labs like Dr. William Shaw's lab in Overland Park, Kansas, that worked in research with the March of Dimes and University of Washington in St. Louis, uh, and other laboratories like Doctors Data in Chicago, Metametrics, and Genova Labs, Immunosciences, and I know all these labs because I've been doing these tests for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, you can now order those tests yourself at directtest.com. You can order the, the 23andMe test and get the raw data and send it to me. And I can do even other tests like the QRMA, Quantitative Resonant Magnetic Analysis, or the Russian 3D NLS. I can tell you right down to not only the specific gene, organic acid, which metabolic imbalance or bioconversion problem. And you're absolutely correct. By promulgating this, and these geneticists are saying it, they're putting... Ashkenazi, Khazarian Jews are great danger because a lot of them carry a, a large weight of very unusual illnesses that if they're intervened with or they're screened, they can be protected from these horrible diseases. And, That's right. Uh, now this, this Jewish, Jewish geneticist that I was talking with, uh, he, he told me, he says these Talmudic um, uh, rabbis, they don't care about DNA. They don't care about science. Uh, no, <laughs> he said, no. he well, said they're magicians. They they're, they're warlocks, basically. Let's call it what it is, okay? Uh, Twenty-five years are. ago, I talked to a I talked to a, uh, a Hebrew a scholar that went to yeshiva in New York City, and I wanted to learn, you know, formally learn Hebrew. And, and I know it's mattering, and I can read some. But uh, he told me, he said, "Now you Christians need to get a life here. We're more like Harry Potter because we're <laughs> warlocks." We're, we're into the magic, said, huh? we're, we're into the magic, we're into Kabbalah, we're into summoning the powers of darkness, we're into casting curses like this. This curse that was put on literally Ariel Sharon when he started to negotiate a land for peace deal with the Palestinians. They put a uh, what's called a, the Whips of Fire, I think it's called, curse on him. And it wasn't long afterward when he had a stroke and died, you know, nearly died, and he did die recently. So, so they blame people the, need to understand what we're dealing with magic. here. Right, and you people need to understand that uh, cursing people is proscribed against by the Bible. So these are not Hebrews. These are not Jews. The word Jew means praiser. And as Jesus, if he was back, would say exactly what I'm saying and what you're saying. And it also means, and this is something that may be hard for people, I'm a, a, a version of what I call Messianic Christian, but I don't come under the law. I'm not super uh, legalistic over whether or not you have a Christmas tree, which to me is not a big deal. I do honor the Hebrew feast days because I think that they give a, a archetype of, to understand the Bible and understand God's plan and the calendars. But what we have right now is what I call Baptist Jews. We have people that are coming back under the law and think that by simulating procedures, songs, and so on, they elevate themselves to a higher form of Christianity by being extremely legalistic but there's very little substance behind that in terms of the, as Jesus said, you strain on a gnat, which is the tiniest insect, but you pass a camel or literally could deliver a camel with all the long legs. And uh, the, these, by and large, most of the Messianic Christians that I've come across are extremely hierarchical, extremely legalistic, and, uh, and extremely condemning of all other forms of Christianity. Even though, for example, when I say there's good Christians that are Catholics, there's Christians that have even been in the Mormon Church and they've come out of the Mormon Church because they know it's a lie, and there's people that uh, you know, have all kinds of filth on them. But when you become, when you get yourself arrogant because you've come back under the law and you say I can't eat this and I can't do that and I can't do such and such, you're just trying to say if I do enough things, I'll be righteous enough for God, which mm. Jesus proscribed against. We're not under the law; we're under grace. So this is very obscene. It doesn't allow you to have a relationship with Jesus or God, which is a definition of good. You hear and do God's will. It's if you think you're righteous enough, you set up a bunch of rules and you follow them, you're pretty damn good. You're just you a know, white man, well, like these whitewashed graves, as Jesus said. That's right, that's right. And, and most Christians don't understand what the Jewish religion is. They're very sincere. They believe it's God's chosen people, but they don't understand yeah. the meaning. Well, for, first off, God does a calling if we're going to do things with him, our Father. But we do the choosing, not God. Mm. We do the choosing. There's no such thing as a chosen people. We do the choosing. <laughs> Welcome back. And by the way, when, uh, when we're talking about this, most Jewish people have been so burnt by things like the, the quote, Holocaust, which is a little, in terms of numerical numbers, overblown. And it actually was a result of a deal between Sabbatean Satanistic Jews that made sure that the rabbis 
uh, through the pale of the settlements in, in Poland and, and through uh, the Soviet Union died in the pogroms of the, after 1918 when, they, when uh, the uh, Russians took over with the communist revolution. But the fact is that uh, the same reason why the state of Israel was to be founded by people who were members of the Duma, a communist party in Russia, including people like Joe Slovo, uh, we have a situation where most Jews are so burnt out with religion that's why we have, if you walk, look at Hollywood and elsewhere, you've got very intelligent people, the Jewish people, and now that the, the basically they're immunized against religion. They're sick of it. And uh, when they, and I get a Jew that gets on fire for Jesus and accepts and then he can actually be a Jew again, not a believer in the Talmud, which if any rational person thinks it's disgusting, uh, they are really on fire. We're not just talking about a kind of lukewarm Christian. We're talking about a Jew that accepts Messiah HaMashiach. They're like white hot on fire for, the, for God and for Jesus. You know, they are, but it's interesting that I get most criticism from the um, Messianic Christians. Uh, well, and the reason is Messianic Christians are called Messy Christians. Uh, yeah, most, messy, most Messy Christians haven't logically thought this through. Well, you know, the law I, does I, not, I, yeah, yeah, the law doesn't make you saved. You're saved by a relationship with the Most High God, and you do. You have to start being a Christian and stop doing Christianity. They're doing Christianity, not being it. Well, you know, I had a, uh, I don't know if you uh, have heard of Pastor uh, J.R. Church, a uh, prophecy yes. in the news. He, and unfortunately, he died uh, uh, several years ago of cancer. Right. He's, a good fr he's a good friend of mine. But uh, right. he, uh, J.R. Church, uh, and I had a big discussion about this one time, uh, and and I, and I said, but uh, the Messianic Christian, those who believe in the Talmud, uh, before I could say a word, he said, well, what's wrong with the Talmud? The Talmud's be okay. And I said, you, no. you've got to be kidding me. You, you've got yeah, to be see, kidding I, me. If he's read it, then he basically <laughs> has to turn off his brain or his frontal lobe before he reads it. He has to have a spiritual and intellectual lobotomy. He, he, well, know, I, I call it, listen, I call it straight here in this program. If people come on, when people come on like yourself, I endorse you. You have a a serious blessing. It means you're right on the mark. Okay. So when there people want are. to criticize you, they need to say <laughs> criticize Deagle too, because Deagle is a direct blood descendant, right through our family tree, right to Moses and Aaron. I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, your genetics does not save you. If I, when I was approached by the Pindar 21 years ago, I could have been a son of hell. And the world would be a lot worse place off if I had gone into plasma physics, believe it or not, from the scholarship I had to go to MIT. I'm going to tell you right now, people out there, you need to repent. And people need to have a relationship with Jesus, not smash, you know, splash in Jesus' face a lot of laws and behaviors and try to make yourself a Baptist Jew, thinking that the Jews are okay or they're the, quote, God's chosen people. God calls everyone, whether you're a Mongolian or black or whatever, the coat of many colors, but we do the choosing. We are the chosen people when we become literally the bond servant, the son or daughter of the Most High, and we start to hear and do Shema, God's will. So that's the only way of being, quote, a messianic believer. And it doesn't mean being a legalistic maniac, thinking that you're better than other Christians because you honor the Hebrew feast days. You've got to stop that and start developing relationship and start being a Christian instead of doing it. Well, let, let me let me tell your audience, uh, Dr. Bill, what has happened just recently. Uh, it, it's just astonishing to me the wave of research that's now coming out that confirms uh, that the uh, the Jews of today, uh, the, the Ashkenazis now, uh, right. do not. You cannot trace them back all the way to Abraham. They're not the descendants, uh, you know, of Abraham. They they have no blood or family relation with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, they, they're traced back to Khazaria for the main part. Uh, right. And, and they're a Turkic people of, of Turkish blood. They, they right. mix in with other things too, but mostly Turkish uh, blood. They come from the Caucasus, which is southern Russia, uh, and uh, they, they, they fled uh, because the Russians uh, took over their country of Khazaria uh, in the 10th uh, through the 13th centuries over to Poland to Hungary, to Lithuania, but mostly to Poland. Uh, and these Polish people went in 1948 to Israel. Now, this is such a, a, a matter of truth now. 
We first had the historians, uh, like, uh, you know, Kessler in his 13th tribe book. We had many archaeologists and others. Now we have the, the scientists with their DNA, and they're confirming this. Uh, and and the, the most substantial uh, DNA of all was done at Johns Hopkins uh, University this last December. Now, the amazing thing is there's more research now. There's, it is piling out. Uh, there are two uh, Jewish uh, scientists, uh, each of whom have done a study to show that the Cohens, the you know Kohanim, uh, right. they're the you know sort of the the workers at the temple, you might say. That's yeah. all. By the way, the Kohanim are not Jews. The Kohanim are Ephraim. They're not Jews. People don't okay. understand it. All the right. Kohen, the only the, the only Jews are the half type of Benjamin, because the other half were slaughtered because of their. Horrible things they did that were commanded to be mm. slaughtered. So they left half the tribe of men. And uh, the Ephraim is the ten tribes, which includes the uh, sons of Aaron and Moses. Mm. Kohenim well, are they, not Jews. People have to understand that. Well, it's interesting that these uh, geneticists have now discovered that the, the Kohenim tribe is found in many, many different races. Uh, of course it uh, the is. Palestinians, and it's not just the Jews. And so, you know, the, the Jews are sort of astounded. They they looked upon the Kohenim, the Kohens, as being their blue bloods. You can find Kohenim that are black in South Africa. You can find <laughs> Kohenim that are everywhere, even there in China, go. because along the Silk Trail, my great-great-grandmother, my great-grandmother, walked alongside the camels because she was from Syria uh, and her father owned the caravan that went back and forth on the Cirque Trail to the to the trade in silk and, and precious metals and and jewels etc uh, over 150 years ago and I can tell you that there's intermarriage there so all these peoples are Asian uh, Middle Eastern they're all crossbred and you can even find uh, evidence that there are even Kohenim that have some bloodlines in Japan that's how far away it goes <laughs> That's true. And, and then, of course, there are the two recent studies, uh, one by, I think, a Dr. Dotar, or Dotar, uh, a Jewish geneticist, uh, and then a, um, a professor from Huddleston University in Great Britain. Uh, both of them, have, uh, working with uh, very much the same data, uh, discovered that all, now listen to this, all of the Jews in the world seem to have come uh, from four women, you know, like they can trace all of them. Every, that's pretty clever, is. and that's mitochondrial DNA research. I know because all yeah. of your mitochondria uh, come from your egg from your mother's. So there if you, you do go. mitochondrial DNA mm -hmm. ontogeny, you can find out exactly who your mother's 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 mother was because it's a straight line. You don't get any mitochondria from your father. Okay, now these these four women, you can to imagine that all of the Jews can go all the way back. And about 2,000 years ago, during the, the time of Jesus, these four <laughs> women who were all Gentile Europeans, they were not Israelites, <laughs> so they all come from these four Gentile women. That's a shock, wow. too. I'll tell you, uh, you're blowing <laughs> the roof off the house. Oh, I'll tell you. It's important. <laughs> Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. You know, God is fulfilling that, you know, that we're in the 2000th year of grace. We've actually had two millennia of grace. And when people try to say that we're going to rule and reign a future millennium with Jesus, we've been ruling for 2000 years now. The problem is people don't come under grace. They don't realize they have to stop doing Christianity and be Christians. If they were Christians, abortion wouldn't happen, murder wouldn't happen, bad foreign policy, people wouldn't be silent when evil's being done in their government, in their own name or their money. We wouldn't do stupid things in church. And I'll give you a good example using the mathematics of religion. Uh, it's wonderful to dance Hebrew dances and sing the songs and have the ironic blessing, Baruch Atah, Adonai, Melech Alam, etc. Those are all wonderful. They're historical, etc. But the definition of good and evil is to hear and do God's will. If you do things to elevate yourself, which is, you know, the basis of evil is, in a sense, narcissism. That's why evil was found within Satan. Mm -hmm. And when we become narcissistic and we think, well, because we can dance Hebrew dances and sing songs and do other things, we're, we're way better than those other Christians. No, 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 no. no. And, and that, by definition, makes it evil. So anybody out there that thinks 
you know, I, I'm a Messianic believer. I would go to a ceremony, but I realize I'm going to have my Christmas tree. I don't need to go to a ceremony to, to, to kind of get points with God. I got my points. My life, um, seven days a week, is on fire as a Delta Force Messianic Christian believer, not a messy Christian that thinks that the law somehow is going to make me more sanctified to Jesus. I'm married to the Most High God. My soul is fused with the Creator, which is why He's given me supernatural gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and healing. And it's not because I'm a wonderful person, it's because I'm willing to accede my will to His will. And well, that's, that's the, the only thing that makes a difference. It's a grace thing. And if people had grace and had relationship, they'd stop this foolishness and they wouldn't support the damn state of Israel that's dragging us into a nuclear war, because that's where we're going. Oh, oh, it, oh, it is. Well, you know, in, in so many churches across America, uh, they, they, they may take very uh, great caution uh, to pray for Israel every week. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I, I'm sure that uh, Jesus even prayed for Israel. But, but most of yeah. all, he prayed for the, for the repentance of Israel, for the salvation. Uh, and, and, you know, he, he, he prophesied against the nation of Israel because right. uh, of, of, of their religion of the elders. Well, uh, you know, he, even... he said, you know, you, that's for, you have for your religion uh, the, the traditions of the elders. That's what the Talmud is. That's what the rabbis. It's a well, that's a, they think religion. even God. They, they think even God consults the rabbis when he's confused. This is these <laughs> crazy comments in the Talmud. It's like, come on, you pull your hair out and you say, "Oh my gosh!" I mean, and you see weird, bizarre behavior on the part of the, the these uh, Jewish believers. It's very obsessive, compulsive, control freak uh, craziness, mm -hmm. and, and it's systemic. It's systemic, and the problem is. Doing these bizarre head rocking things, like I went on the flight 1992, 1999 to Israel, out of New York City, and I tell you, have you ever seen those things called bobbleheads? You know, the bobble in the water and the yes. head goes back up. Yes, I have. Uh. <laughs> I thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought our airplane went down, and now I'm in hell. <laughs> All these people were <laughs> bending over, praying with these little boxes on their forehead, and I'm thinking, and they had the tifflim up their arms, you know, because they had these. Uh, uh, the, the, the filling, you know, all around their arms, and they're like it's like manic impressive day in the psychiatric ward. It was like, oh my god, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, there is a sexual uh, content to some of those things, especially when oh, the yeah. whole body is rocking uh, against the, uh, the, the no, temple wall. You know what they're so called? Do you know what they're doing? It's, it's a phallic move. Yeah, it really is. It's a shame they have you know the Zedek, uh, the, the top of the line rabbi. You know, it's interesting to me that. That right before Jesus, I think there were maybe a hundred years before Jesus, was the first time they even had something called rabbis. Remember, they used to have the Levites uh, who did uh, all of the, the functions uh, of the rabbis, and they came right. up with this rabbi. Mm. Where is that? Moses never talked about a rabbi. No, there's no That's rabbi. That's why even, even Jesus says, well, there, call no man well, rabbi. Well, the reason is that what they want to do is elevate someone. To be a priest class or a teacher class, when in fact the Kohanim were actually supposed to be uh, not a separate teacher class at all. In other words, you could be anywhere in the Kohanim, and you could be considered that you go off to the temple if your your straw is drawn. Mm -hmm. But what they did is set up a rabbinical class of people that were not only not necessarily Kohanim, but whatever ever they used geopolitics, etc., in order to get control of the Sanhedrin, and they usually would they make deals like they made deals with the Romans. I mean, the whole area, the area would not have been taken over. Just like I have a real simple solution to Israel. Annex Israel, uh, have the generals take over control of the crazy nation. As the surrounding nations that have weapons pointed at Israel, make deals or go in with Delta Force to defang them, but also defang Israel. Israel is armed to the teeth, and with the crazy nation of Saudi Arabia, they plan in the next few months, not years, to attack Iran. That's going to guarantee this year or next, unless God intervenes, we're going to have a massive worldwide, not just Middle Eastern, thermonuclear, biological, and chemical war. This is the end. If we don't see repentance, and that means repentance by Christians who call themselves, I call them Baptist Jews, or messy Christians, real Christians who are called silent, and if you're a real Christian, you can't be silent against abortion or against abominations or support democratic progressive communism under someone like Obama or anybody like him, like Hitler, Rot, and Glinton. I mean, this woman is physically and emotionally and spiritually the most evil person I've ever physically met on the planet. Mm. And, and I met her at Dakota Ridge High School in 2000 after I took care of Mark Taylor, who was the first kid shot in Columbine. Mm -hmm. And when Marine One helicopter came in, 
I met Bill Clinton, and you could, you you wouldn't want to turn your back on him, but you could probably go for the six pack and go fishing. You know, <laughs> right. sneaky as hell. But when I went in the presence of Hillary Clinton, I felt I was literally holding hands with the daughter of Satan himself, Lilith. My goodness, goodness! It was like, oh my God! It's like it was moving into a spiritual black hole. Yeah. Well, this is this is where I don't understand pastors or uh, ministers uh, who want to hold hands with Jewish rabbis. Uh, and say we're all one. We all have the same God. We have the <laughs> yeah. you know same well, religion. That, that's, well, look that's at the Pope. crazy. Look at look at the Pope. This well, guy is Pope, a Jesuit. Yeah. It means he is a Satanist. First off. And he's not a Christian because he says you don't need to even know Jesus if you're an atheist. You can get into heaven, which means you don't need to be married to God, which is marriage that talks that Jesus talks about the marriage of the Spirit of the Most Eternal One and the most the source of all love and all knowledge and all wisdom, which is a Creator, and our soul, which thirsts for Him. And people don't realize that heaven starts today and hell only becomes evident when the body drops away. That's and, right. And of course, he's the darling uh, of the liberal set. Because, you know, they, they want a pope that will be like them, that will oh, be liberal course. like them, that will, that will uh, throw away the Bible, uh, uh, throw away uh, any common sense, really. Well, uh, and they, had, they had a ceremony in Mount, uh, uh, the mountain right over Bethlehem um, uh, just on November 17th. And they had, 20, I think it was 24 rabbis, 24 uh, Catholic priests, and 24 imams. Mm. Saying uh, prayers, quote to the quote, same God. When the, there's no damn way it's the same God. The God of Mecca and Medina <laughs> is the uh, Moon War God of Islam, and of course the, the the God that obviously this Jesuit monster believes in is obviously Lucifer. He's not believing in the God of of grace and love and resurrection. He's believing in the God of power and manipulation and control. And he's it's like a mafia don. <clears throat> he doesn't care what schmagma dog, but what dog me have. Just make me the head of all the dons and all the mobsters of the world, the religious mobsters. <laughs> it, well, but he's very clever. He's very. He's a Jesuit. You know, Jesuits are taught uh, Hegelian dialectic, uh, and you know how to manipulate uh, people uh, through language. So he's, he's he's very very clever. I will say that for oh, him. Oh, yeah, he's intelligent. But uh, so is Hillary. Hillary is a genius, intelligent, but malevolently liquid evil, and so is this Pope. <laughs> And uh, when they say who can stop Hillary, it's in the Time magazine this week. I and noticed it on the her, cover, huh? Yeah, and you can see her going with spurs on her high heels. It's like, <laughs> uh, you, you don't know who you're talking about here. Hillary, if, if you think Obama's bad, Obama's like, you know, biting into a tooth with cyanide. Hillary yeah. is like having an IED strapped to you that's going to blow you to bits right down to your subatomic particles. And it's amazing, George W. Bush and Barack Obama have paved the way for her. Oh, absolutely. It's She's all going to be ready to go. Design. Oh, yeah. She's There's no opposition. In the Democratic Party, anybody willing to fight against her in terms of she wants the presidency, if her health keeps up, who said that she has Parkinson's, mm -hmm. she's got it. She does. And the Republican Party are so incompetent, they're going to let this flow. here. Tex, we're going to have to have you back. Um, I've said some things today that might inflame people. I am here uh, called as a blood descendant of Moses and Aaron, but not to operate in the, uh, in the office of a Kohanim, typically that way. I'm here to operate as a simple Christian. A believer that's a Delta Force Christian who believes that we need to be Christians, not do Christianity. And when you have someone as bold and brave as a Tex Mars, and I know you've had a lot of stripes and a lot of spittle uh, intellectually and otherwise put on you, the fact is that Christians need to start becoming real with God. If we were real here in America, our money wouldn't be going to Obamacare to pay for abortions for not only people here, but when the first act of Obama was to put the Montreal Protocol so that he could pay for abortions in Kenya, his supposed home state or country. Mm. We have a situation where people need to get this book and your other books because you've got an amazing array. Because if we don't wake up, and God says, I'm going to give you a brain so you can use it, number one. And you've got to get rid of your cognitive dissonances and the things that basically conflict with each other. You can't do these things like singing Hebrew songs and not standing up against abortion. You can't think that legalism and the law is going to make you better than other Christians when in fact your life, just like the, the Jews do when they go to have their sins taken away in Yom Kippur, that doesn't make you good for the rest of the year so you can put the screws to your neighbors and your friends and business partners. Mm -hmm. you, you, in other words, 
you know, people say, how do you pray? I said, how do you have a heartbeat or a pulse? How do you breathe? Mm. Uh, we don't see, you know, it, you know. I think, uh, what was the Indian uh, pacifist? Uh, a Gandhi or... Uh, Gandhi, he, he made a statement mm -hmm. once, and I remember this now, Gandhi made the statement of, I love Christianity, it's the most beautiful religion on earth, someday I'll meet one. Someday I'll meet one. Well, you know, something you said earlier in the program, and I would I would like for people to consider, Doctor Bill, you you indicated that that when we become a Christian, when we're when we're born again through faith in Jesus Christ, right? We are we are brought into the kingdom, right? That, that, that's that, you know you, you mentioned that just in passing, but it was so it was very profound, and I meant to you know I made a little middle note to to bring right. that up again in the program. We, so we're already really ruling and reigning. We already have a scepter. We got to stop go. thinking. We don't need to go through Mary and pray. We don't need to lay prostrate for hours before God. We need to literally surrender our whole life and our whole will to God and just let Him do it. And we have relatives that won't, that, that are not receiving God. You got to hand them over. God may have to break their legs to get them to Jesus. <laughs> he may make them have to go blind or get 80% body burns. He may have to have them go through cancer to get them to see God before not only they die a physical death, but the spiritual death. And that's the state our American country is. America well, you know, is when, like a cancer patient with multiple metastases in every organ system. We're the doctors are now saying, well, we can do proton therapy and advanced chemo, and you might survive the chemo, and you got probably six months. Mm. That's the state of America today. Yeah. Well, the, the the concept of the kingdom is something that most Christians don't understand. They believe right. that Jesus is going to come back to establish His kingdom. He's going to put Jews in charge of it, <laughs> yeah. and all these kinds of things. And we're, they don't. They don't understand. And you, you mentioned also the covenant. Jesus right. came when Jesus came. He brought a new and better covenant. The right. Bible says, and, and that's what I talk about in my book. In addition to the DNA, uh, you know, all the evidence. I also talk about what the Bible says about the kingdom of God. Jesus has exactly. go forth and 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 teach the whole world of the kingdom. Uh, and that's, right. that's very important. And uh, when Christians but, don't understand, you know, I was talking with a pastor friend, and he said, "Well, the kingdom is not yet. That's going to come." Oh, come on! In and fact, I said, well, of course, if you actually look at it, that <laughs> every person that is a true believer is the living stone of the New Jerusalem. It doesn't come down out of heaven separately. We are the living stones that make up the gates and the walls and everything. We are the New Jerusalem. We are and the we have, kingdom. And and we have the high priest Jesus. I mean, how much you you mentioned? How much more power do you need, and then to have Jesus Christ as your boss, right? I mean, right there, uh, and, right. and we're we're all part of the kingdom, and and the kingdom of Satan cannot uh, cannot uh, survive uh, our our assault. So, really, that's the wonderful thing. When people ask me, well, aren't you afraid you'll be killed or hurt? Or, no, 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 no. I'm not afraid of. That. I mean, it could be, but I mean, Jesus is going to take care of those things. You don't got a big bodyguard here. But, you know what? The, the text, you'll never leave a second before or after the appointed time, or neither will that's I. That's right. Uh, there you before go. we have saved as many souls as we can from not only physical, emotional, financial destruction and devastation, because that's what's happening. A lot of these mega churches, uh, messianic churches that are called messy churches that don't put Jesus first, uh, that don't be Christians, mm -hmm. they're going to receive judgment. In fact, the judgment is on his house. And when we have a pope that's, you know, many people, even non-Christians, think, hey, maybe it's time to turn Catholic. This pope's pretty uh, charismatic, man. He, <laughs> yeah. he he even accepts atheists. You can even be an atheist, man, and get into his church. Hallelujah. I will yeah, go. And he, and, he loves, and he loves the poor. You know, he wants to help the poor, which is something, of course, we all won't, but... <laughs> Uh, we don't want to give up our uh, our faith for that. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Well, one of the Amazing. one of the it's it's very interesting on this DNA issue. I, I find that the the opposition to it is really frantic. The Zionists are trying to figure out what to do. They don't have any research facts. They've been cut, they've been bottling all this up for forty years, uh, trying to hide the fact that they're Khazars. That they're actually let me just put it bluntly, they're Gentiles. They're, right. they're Gentiles, and they're, they're you know, Polish Khazar Gentiles uh, of Turkish just, blood, and, and they have and no also, familial and relation. Also, and Satanists. They're, they worship Satan. They re worship the, 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 the coiled serpent god, uh, and there's a specific Hebrew term for it. This is what they worship. 
and they can they're, do curses. I mean, they actually uh, can do curses on people. Come on now, you're cursing someone is not in the Bible. No, if you're no, doing it's that, your 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 father <laughs> is Satan, the opposer, the great destroyer. There you go. Well, you know, they're 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 afraid that they will be seen as as frauds. Uh, and well, they you are. see, it's interesting. This. Um, uh, this NIH researcher was telling me, he says, you know, I don't care where I come from. It doesn't matter to me if I'm Chinese or whatever. Exactly. Which is that's, true where, of, that's why when of, I talk to a Jew of Jewish descent who's now in the secular agnostic, and I tell him about Jesus and truly convinced him, one of my good friends uh, was a basically a secular Jew. He didn't go, he would, you know, went when he was younger to the synagogue and so on, but he rejected the Talmud and all the other garbage. And when he buried his parents this last year, 2013, mm. on the mountain in Jerusalem, Jesus came up to him physically during the middle of the day and said, don't worry, but your mother and father are with me. And mm. that time, he's, he's on fire for Jesus now. So if mm. you're having visions and visitations and even Muslims and other people, and people who call themselves Christians, because we're at the end. It's not the end of the world, but for a lot of people, in the next five years to ten years, their mm -hmm. world's going to end. They're not just going to die. They're going to die spiritually and go to the, to the, to the place of annihilation. Mm. It well, says he'd, he'd refer, worry with those for, not only for those who can destroy the body, but who can destroy the soul. The soul is not eternal unless it's married to the spirit of the eternal one. You are not an eternal being. Sorry to blow your, burst your bubble there. You don't even get to live in eternity in hell. You're going to be destroyed. You're going to be annihilated. And those who are not married to God, you're not, there's no such thing as eternity for you. you got what you got now and a very short period of annihilation, and you're done. And that's what's really disturbing when I hear also, this ties, by the way, to the, another lie, which is the lie of the rapture, which is, means you have to have a rupture in logic if you believe in this foolish rapture garbage. <clears throat> there's no such thing as a... I told one lady back in Dallas when I spoke to 42 cities in Israel, she came up, Dr. Deagle, I don't know what you mean about the rapture. And I said, well, Dallas is a city that has, and I know this is a fact, at least half a dozen nuclear weapons aimed at your city because you have a lot of military industrial manufacturing here. Space technology, et cetera, nuclear remediation sites, et cetera. So I said, guess what? If a bomb lands on your home or nearby a few miles away and you get vaporized in an atomic cloud, you can say, hello, Jesus. That's the rapture. Well, that's, I see what then you she mean goes, she, went, she went, oh, and she said so long, and the people around her were almost laughing, you know, because she said so long, and her eyes got really big. She realized, like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's so, there's so much, uh, so many myths tied up with the rapture. Well, the rapture is uh, tied directly to the idea that we're all gone in a rapture, and the only ones ruling and reigning the earth are these Sabbatean Satanistic Jews with the greater Israel. And any That's remaining true. nations are going to be vassals of the super race of these evil, satanic, serpent-dwelled men and women of clay and iron. Mm. Okay? So the rapture is tied directly to this Zionistic lie. And again, I believe that God can restore people to the land of Israel, but it's a conditional covenant. Mm. No one owns the land but the Creator. That's right. We just conditionally get there if we continue relationship. And God proved that with Israel. He spewed them out of his mouth and Jezreel and just scattered them all over the world to prove that if you don't stay in covenant, you're not in covenant with God. You're not a son or daughter. Mm. You're, there's, as I say, many are called, but if you are chosen, we do the choosing. There's no such thing as a chosen people. It's just heresy, blasphemy, and evil. Thank you, Text Myers. They can get it at powerofprophecy.com, powerofprophecy.com. Text, amazing program. Thank you for coming on.